How you doing, sir? The reason I'm stopping Judge you. Judge Williams. Police officer versus judge. That's what you see in this video. What happens when a local police officer in the jurisdiction where the judge presides pulls over the judge for something that the judge thinks he shouldn't be pulled over for? What ensues? So this is what ensues. Take a look at this body cam footage that came out of Moorfield, West Virginia, and I don't think you'll really see it anywhere else. But here's what ended up happening. This judge, as a result of this encounter and what happened afterwards, ends up being charged with basically verbally attacking this officer during this traffic, traffic stop and abusing his power. Ultimately, he ended up getting a formal statement of charges from the judicial disciplinary investigators and uh, in part based on what happened after the video. So first, let's take a look at the video. What's the problem? How you doing, man? sir? The reason I'm stopping Judge you. Judge Williams. Judge, I don't, what, why did you stop me? You had your cell phone in your hand. I had my phone like this. Yeah. I just lost it. I was just okay. looking for it, pulled it up like this, was okay. not on it. I just looked in the car. Go up and look. Okay, why are you screaming at me? Sir, I you have wasn't doing anything. Insurance. You have your license registration and insurance? I wasn't doing anything okay. wrong. You have your license registration I'm not going to give you my license registration. You were doing something wrong. You cannot have a handheld. I had my phone just like this. I was that not is, on my phone. In what state of West Virginia, you cannot have a handheld cell phone? And you all aren't ever on yours, right? You're never on yours. I drive by a lot of times and y'all are on yours. You're never on yours, right? Okay, I don't understand you're why you're yelling at me. You're never on yours. Why are you yelling at me, sir? I said, you're never on yours. Why are you yours. yelling at me? I'm not, I'm you not yelling at you. Yes, you have been. I've never raised my voice to you. Let me tell you something. Here. You all are on yours. I was not if talking to you. If you read the code, the code says that if we're Here. conducting official business, Thank you can be on it. I just don't know why you're no, yelling no. at me. No, not on official business. Okay. Here. Thank you, sir. I, what, what's, why are you uh, so uptight? Huh? Go ahead and give me a ticket. What's Go going ahead. on? Give me a ticket. Why are you so shaky? What's going on? I'm irritated because you pulled me over for no reason. You had your cell phone in your hand. I picked up my cell phone because I had it lost. Okay. I pulled it up here and I was had my hand on it here okay. to put it in here. You That's know the what law, you saw. Though. You know the law. So what? What if I have a cup in my hand? You. You can't have a cell phone in the state of West Virginia in your hand. Give me a ticket. I don't write me a ticket. I just don't understand why you're. Go give me a ticket. Write me a ticket. And I'll take it up to the town office and I'll go to trial. But give me a ticket. Go ahead. It's ridiculous what you're doing. How ridiculous. is it ridiculous? It's ridiculous. That you had your cell phone because in your hand. You, you all have yours. I've seen it many times. Y'all have yours and you don't get pulled over. And it, tell me, don't tell me it's on official business. I hear your cases every day in court. Okay, what's that Go mean? Give me a ticket. Give me a ticket. Give me a ticket. I'm, I'm really irritated about this whole... Go ahead and give me a ticket. But why are you being like this to me? I've never done nothing to you in my whole life. You just pulled me over for no because reason. Because you had your cell phone in your hand. Pulled me over for no reason. Give you had your cell phone. Okay. Charles Williams of Moorfield expires 4 of 21 on an expired Class E 0 points 29 25 is clear good.
Lieutenant Mel. Who and what does that come back to? Hold on. Hello? Yes. No, I haven't even wrote it yet. Nine, I'm probably not going to write it. Back to oh my god. Okay, well, he's literally just screaming at me and everything else. For no reason. Tried. He's just screaming at me, and then he said that he said that he reviews our, he or looks at our cases every day, and we do wrong. Blah 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 blah. So. Mhm. Mm me take it or not I don't care I'll take it up to town we'll go to a trial buddy that's fine with me and I tell you what the next time I see any of you on the phone I'm stopping right there and call the state police any of them. okay this is how I had my phone I reached down and got it under my seat I pulled it up here I was driving like this I was not talking on it you can look you can look when you pulled me over see whether I was on my phone why are you being like this I'm being it because I've seen this crap enough and I'm tired here of you it go. here's your license much your privilege insurance give it to me let me have my license now. Also, you need to go get your license up to date because they're expired, okay? Next time I... What you may not been, have been able to tell watching that video was that there were a couple phone calls made. So during the stop, when the police officer goes back to his car, the judge actually picks up his cell phone that he got pulled over for and calls this police officer's lieutenant. And in that lieutenant's opinion, was trying to stop the issuance of a ticket during the traffic stop itself and that's when the lieutenant actually called the police officer which we saw on the body cam and he had a conversation with the lieutenant there was more that happened later that evening so williams called moorfield police chief stephen riggleman on his personal cell phone later that night saying quote he just had words with, with one of your boys before telling his version of the story, he also told the chief that he was tired of being disrespected, that he planned to call the state police if he, said, uh, if he saw officers on their phones and that he could call the chief anytime he wanted. Riggleman told Williams not to call him when he was at home with his family, and then the judge apparently hung up on the chief. Also later that evening, the judge wasn't done. He called former police chief of that jurisdiction at home. The judge in that phone call was critical of that police department and of this particular officer. He also hinted that he might treat future cases involving this department differently. Judge Williams then called the lieutenant again, saying he was, quote, sick and tired of Moorfield PD running around like a bunch of thugs, harassing innocent, hardworking people, and questioning whether my boy should, my boy in quotes, should even have a job in light of a May 2020 felony charge of wanton endangerment. That was later dismissed without prejudice. Um, so he's apparently trying to get or threatening to get any ways um, this officer fired or even worse, potentially criminal charges that apparently were beat brought back up. Um, Williams also called another fellow presiding uh, sitting circuit court judge, same jurisdiction later that evening. This other judge testified that Williams was, quote, really intent on proving himself right, but he wasn't done yet. 10 p.m. later that same evening, Judge Williams visited the mayor of that town. Moorfield Mayor Carol Zuber, um, and I believe that that it was it was what eleven forty or a 10, 10 p.m. Okay, forty five minute conversation. She comes out of her house, and the judge says he wants to file a complaint against Officer Johnson. He complained about the Moorfield PD. He told her that Johnson had pulled him over previously for running a stop sign 
But he didn't issue him a ticket that time either. So he didn't get a ticket either time, but he still wanted criminal charges coming back. He still wanted him fired. He wanted to complain. When the mayor said she'd look at the Officer Johnson's body cam video the next day, all of a sudden Williams hung his head and then he disclosed that he'd been a, quote, asshole during the stop. So apparently it sounds like maybe he didn't know that there was body cam footage showing the way that he acted until he decided to go to the mayor's house that night and complain in person to her. All right, the next day, the the prosecutor of that county, um, Lucas C., watched this video as well. He was unsure of how to proceed, so he contacted a retired circuit court judge who previously served as chairman of the JIC, the Judicial Investigation Commission. He told the prosecutor to gather information, take it to the other circuit court judge, contact the Office of Disciplinary Counsel to report the incident. I'm not sure if that meant to refer to the Judicial Investigatory um, Counsel. In any event, um, after Judge Williams talked to this other judge and to the prosecutor, then he decided that now he would self-report him, himself. He would self-report the incident because they told him, apparently, that they were going to have to report him. So he did self-report himself on July 15th, after which he was informed that a complaint was already opened against him earlier that same day. Now, later, the, the police chief did prepare a ticket charging the judge with improper use of a cell phone and driving without a valid license. That ended in a plea deal with the prosecutor to no contest to the driving without a valid license charge. In exchange, the cell phone charge that he so highly disputed would be dismissed without prejudice. He was ordered to pay $30 in court costs. So there was a 24-page complaint statement of charges filed, <clears throat> excuse me, filed against him that detailed other traffic stops involving the judge for expired registration and failure, failure to wear a seatbelt. And he wasn't, big surprise, he wasn't given a ticket during any of those stops either. The officers involved in those cases uh, reported to investigators that his demeanor was fine during those stops. All right, the formal statement of charges finds that probable cause exists to formally charge him with uh, violations of the judicial ethics rules. So he has the opportunity to respond to that. They had, they had asked that he be suspended without pay pending the outcome of the disciplinary matter. However, the Supreme Court deferred on ruling on the suspension without pay um, because the judge agreed to no longer preside over criminal cases in Hardy County and is prohibited from hearing any matter involving the Moorfield Police Department and or its officers during the pendency of the proceedings, which is probably a good idea. Uh, September 30th, Supreme Court order found that there is probable cause to proceed on these uh, formal charges against the judge and ordered that the matter be remanded to the JIC, the Investigation Commission. That order led to the formal statement of charges being filed. Okay, so the next step is there would be, it would proceed to what's called a judicial hearing board, which is sort of a advisory uh, panel of, of mostly judges of different types, and then they would make a recommendation and then that recommendation would go to the West Virginia Supreme Court, who ultimately would make a decision on what discipline is appropriate based on what happened. In the meantime, the, the judge can hire counsel and attempt to reach a plea deal with the judicial prosecutors. But in the end, it is up to the Supreme Court. 